Well, good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciple Mind podcast for Thursday, February 4th, 2016. I've got me a little Starbucks today because it's my last day of the week going into the office. I am looking forward to this semester being done. I don't really like taking Fridays as my work from home day. I don't know. I, something about doing it at the end of the week. It's just like I either have a hard time. Like on Fridays, I have a hard time not feeling like it's the weekend already. And on Mondays, I have a hard time feeling like it's the weekend is over. So I kind of like doing a middle of the week one. It gives me a nice break, you know, like Thursday or something along those lines. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, uh, Sierra's still missing today. Today makes uh, three weeks, I believe. So, yeah. Got my second three-page paper done for my management class and turned in this morning. So, yay. Get the exam back for that class tonight. So, we'll see how I did. See how I did. What am I thinking about? You know, I saw a news article yesterday that Amazon is going to be opening like 400 brick and mortar stores, actual real stores. And I've, I found that curious. Apparently they've had a store, I forget where it was at, but they've had, they, they, they set up a store someplace. Can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. And it was thought by analysts to be kind of like a little vanity project, you know. But now they're going to open up 400 more across the country. And on first glance, they really had me scratching my head because you know, if I think of them, and, and part of that it was probably driven by the imagery that was with the article because it showed a building with a Barnes Noble logo on it and like the Amazon logo being lowered in place over the Barnes Noble logo. And if all this is going to be is a bookstore, then it makes no sense. Because the Amazon online model is the thing that has hastened the um, the end of the bookstore of the of the you know real go to a building and buy a book bookstore. It's just too you know with with e-readers and now with Prime, it's really just too darn convenient. otherwise but I had a thought occur to me this morning that you know maybe they're not going to do just books you know some people tend to think of Amazon as as just a bookseller but you know they sell a buttload of other stuff and we buy I mean that's kind of my my first place to go to look for for pretty much anything you know I used to really be big at buying stuff at Best Buy as far as tech within some limits but as far as major pieces of technology that was always my first stop and that's not really the case anymore a lot of the stuff that I would buy at Best Buy I nowadays would probably buy at, at Kindle uh, buy Kindle, buy at Amazon. So I don't know if they would if they would include some of their other product lines, some electronics, uh, things of that nature. I, I also wonder if they'll have a new option that's uh, shipped to store. 
or maybe you can get free shipping to your local Amazon store. You know, with the with, with the thought being that if you walk into the store, you might see something else that you want to buy and therefore drive revenue directly to the store. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes and to see how successful it is. If it's just bookstores, then I'm going to be scratching my head. And, I, and again, I'm going to have to think that it's going to have a tough time succeeding. But if they include things like electronics, housewares, um, you know, toys, things like that that are probably their big sellers online also... Then you know maybe it would it would um, it would work. Although you know there's been other stores like that. There was this one. Oh, I forget what it was. I think it started with an M, but I cannot remember. There was these stores we had around here. I don't know if they're national or what, but they were a combination bookstore and movies and music. I think it was, and this was before. This is probably like a predecessor to Best Buy, I think, so. Where he's kind of, well, you can get movies and music there. Yeah, yeah, but it was kind of like a media. It was probably, the name was probably Media something. Media Mart, I don't think it was Media Mart. But, uh, and they were kind of cool stores. I went there a few times, but they ended up, they, they, they ended up folding after a couple of years, I think. You know, so if they're going to, you know, get back to that. It would really be interesting they find some cool ways to integrate your digital experience with going to the store. I'm not quite sure how that would work. Like maybe if you go to the store and, and buy digital music from a kiosk or something, maybe you get a, a free track or you know some sort of incentive to go to the store to buy it as opposed to just doing it on your phone or on your tablet or what have you. So yeah, that's going to be interesting, interesting to watch and see what happens there. I started my read through of of Hugo winners. I've started with the 2015s for obvious reasons. I went to the library last night in part to get new books to read and in part to get some more books for my big paper for the management class. And I picked up two books um, that are 2015 Hugo winners. So the first one I'm reading is called The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Adelson, I think. Adelson? Something like that. And I've only probably read 20 pages, but I'm enjoying it so far. She's got a nice style. And she sets up the situation very quickly. And uh, it's, it's, it's too soon to tell if it's going to be how much political intrigue there's going to be. It's an interesting world because it appears the main kingdom is run by elves. And the main character is is this guy who is the the offspring of the king and a goblin woman so he's he's half goblin half elf and it gives him a dark complexion a darker complexion you it, it's it's very telling that you know the, the elves are very pale because whenever one of the one of the elves are being described one of the words that's always used is white I mean, whatever other attributes that she wants to give to one of the elves white is always in there and usually toward the front of the list so they are they were obviously very pale so even before i really got a sense of okay he's darker skinned I knew that he was differently skinned just because of that that word white there. Um, you know, and, and the way she uses it, I don't get a sense of white like Caucasian white. You get the sense of this pure paleness. 
You know, so she does that well because she doesn't really explain the term. You know, there's not a, a half a paragraph about what white means, but she gets a sense across of this of this you know pale purity, as I said, of this true whiteness going on there. And uh, it's, 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 it's interesting. I mean, even, even in the first 20 or so pages, there's some interesting things on there. But anyway, so he's like sent off to this hunting manor off on the edge of the territories because the father doesn't really want to deal with him, doesn't recognize him, doesn't like him. But then it turns out the father and the whole royal family, um, you know, so, so it kind of sounds like it's going to be kind of like your Lord of the Rings style level of technology, I guess I'll say. But then the the whole royal family is coming back from some wedding on an airship and the airship crashes and they all die. And so now, the half goblin guy, whose name is like Maya? I think it's M-I-A-I. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. I think that was the name. Uh, he's the emperor. So the line of succession falls to him. He was like five levels deep, so it wasn't expected that he would ever be emperor. And now he's the emperor. So it's going to be interesting. You know, they don't seem to be, she doesn't seem to be trying to go for a, a real steampunk theme, even though we got the airships there. It's just, you know, part of the, part of the um, technology that they have. And then he's got to go in and he's got to kind of get control of the court. And, and the, um, there's like a, a council of reasons kind of thing that, that also do things. He's got to get kind of control of that. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I am enjoying it. Uh, it's, it's pretty rare that I've I've gleaned so much and enjoyed so much just from the first little chunk of a book. So I guess that says something for the quality of the writing. And hopefully I will let that steep in my brain and can regurgitate it out at some point through my fingers. I shouldn't use regurgitate there. That sounded bad. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to let that be that for today. I will be back tomorrow on Friday, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.